الكلمة الآن لرئيس الوفد الباكستاني فليتفضل مشكورا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم honorable organizers of this very important conference ladies and gentlemen we have gathered here today in the city of baghdad a city of peace capital of darul islam we all read about it home to pioneering scientists mathematicians astrologers poets legal minds sufi saints above all imams for all pakistanis baghdad has a special place and we are honored to be here today Khalil Gibran a famous poet said life without liberty is like a body without a soul for more than 4 weeks almost israelis are brutally mercilessly slaughtering palestinians and all that the palestinians are doing is fighting for their rights fighting for their liberty fighting for their soul we have seen israelis kill more than 10000 palestinian civilians that include women children babies elderly who have nothing to do with the war who are merely civilians we have seen more than 25000 injured we are witnessing more than 2 million palestinians being displaced we are seeing it in front of our eyes their food water fuel electricity everything has been stopped they are being treated worse than animals it is said they don't need humanitarian aid stop it it is said we will bomb your hospitals and they are bombing hospitals ever heard of that ladies and gentlemen the other hospitals are not functioning injured palestinians are in misery they are in pain they are crying and they are dying all corridors of humanitarian aid have been stopped ladies and gentlemen genocide is taking place genocide is taking place and let me say today let me say that it is worse than holocaust in spite of all this ladies and gentlemen israel is saying palestinians are terrorists pick up the history books right from the belfour declaration made by the british where zionism was given an official endorsement to the mandate that was given by the league of nations right from that time till the creation of israel 
Zionists through underground militant organizations systematically slaughtered Palestinians. They systematically, ladies and gentlemen, occupied their territory. And from 1948 till today, they killed the citizens of Palestine. They say we are killing terrorists without a trial, without any hearing. They simply say we are the judge, we are the executioners. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> excuse me, who is the invader and who are the occupied? Again, let's just look at history. History will answer it. I don't have to present their case. Look at the map. Pick up the map of that area before 1948. Was Israel existing then? Pick up the map of 1967. You will see that Israel is becoming bigger and bigger. Palestine is shrinking smaller and smaller. Pick up the map of today. You will see Palestine is just a strip now. Who is the occupier and who are the occupied? Mr. Chairman, United Nations, hundreds of resolutions have been passed. Hundreds of resolutions have been passed. What has Israel done to those resolutions? Torn them apart. Thrown them into the dustbin. What is the use of the United Nations, may we ask? I question myself. Is it any use passing these resolutions? Or are they mere words, empty words, that are not implemented. Ladies and gentlemen, I am also a little bit ashamed, a little bit ashamed of the allies of Israel. When somebody says, when somebody kills a child and says, I am killing a future terrorist. I am killing a child? No, I am killing a future terrorist. And yet the world looks away. Our representative, Pakistan's representative to the United Nations raised a very important point. He said, are Palestinian children children of a lesser God? A fight take place in Ukraine, the world stands up. They say, bring the refugees, bring everybody, what is this going on, stop the war, immediately. A child that is maybe of a different color, a child that is perhaps of my color, is a child of a lesser God, the world will not rise up, the world will not stop the killing of the child? I ask this forum. The law is not being obeyed, human rights are... War crimes are being committed. I have studied, I am a lawyer by profession. I have studied international law. I have examined the resolutions, I have examined the various conventions of the UN. These are war crimes. It is a war crime to force people to leave their homes. It is a war crime to kill civilians. It is a war crime to stop routes, humanitarian routes. It is a war crime to bomb hospitals. It is a war crime to kill children. These are war crimes. These are 
human right violations of the highest order, unprecedented, never seen in the history of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, I say, Pakistan believes all civilians are the same. All people are the same. All human rights, all, all human lives are the same. Pakistan believes that everyone feels the pain of misery. Everyone feels the pain of injury. Everyone feels the grief of the killing of the loved one. And everyone is entitled, therefore, to the basic human rights, safety and safeguards that the international world has made available. Therefore, while we are talking about Palestine, ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan has another very serious issue. An equally grave, an equally heinous, an equally terrifying, an equally miserable, an equally heartbreaking, an equally heartbreaking issue, which is the people and the plight of Kashmiris. Kashmir also has been occupied. Kashmir also deserves the same human rights. Kashmir also deserves that the United Nations resolutions that are available to it be enforced. These are two major issues. So what has Pakistan suggested? Pakistan has suggested we have come to this forum and we would like we would appreciate, we would hope, highest hope, that we will unanimously, without any digression today, say that there must be immediate, immediate, forthwith, in my language we call it foreign ceasefire. Because let me also tell you what we feel. We feel that if this ceasefire is not, does not happen today, if the ceasefire does not happen today, it is likely to spread. It is likely to spread to the region and it is likely to spread beyond. It may even lead to clash of civilizations, people are saying. So immediate ceasefire. Then, once the ceasefire takes place, humanitarian aid, removal of blockades follow. And rebuilding takes place later. Right now, having spoken to my Palestinian friends, having spoken to my Arab friends, having spoken to my Western friends in the West, having spoken to my Turkish friends, we feel that first ceasefire and then we talk about rebuilding. Then we talk about the long-term solutions of two nations, two states or going back to the 1947 borders. So we've made some suggestions, ladies and gentlemen, in this, and the suggestions have been read. I have summarized those suggestions in this particular speech that I have given, and I hope that you will consider those. Thank you very much.